All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about a sequential function chart, which will be controlling a conveyor system, detecting a box and sorting a box based upon its height, right? So that if the height is a certain height, we're gonna be using a pusher and then pushing it onto another conveyor, or if it's, it's less than that height, then we're gonna be allowing it to go straight through. Now, this is using a sequential function chart, which is uh, part of Rockwell's Aut Rockwell Automation's Studio 5000, uh, and we're using version 31. And for our machine simulator, that we'll be doing our 3D model of our machine, we're using Easy PLC's machine simulator. Um, and all of our situation is virtualized, um, so we're using it to transition our communications back and forth. We're using RS Links Classic and APC DDE Topic, which would be box sorting, right? So that's going to be basically our communications for our tags between Studio 5000 and Easy, Easy PLC's machine simulator. So the 3D model of the machine that we're actually working, right? That's the way we're communicating all of our tags. So in the current state, you can see it stop right now. I can start it and then stop it again, right? So you can see all this stuff is fully working. So let's go ahead and explain how a uh, sequential function chart works, all right? So we have a step and transition model, right? Which is basically, uh, you have a step where you can do set actions. Um, in our case, we're doing something very simple. We're just controlling tags, um, at which all these tags in this step, um, this action uh, per se would be using a, uh, they're all booleans and they're using e either an active or non-active. So they're either a zero or a one, right? And then it's waiting on, and the transition itself right here, it's gonna be waiting to transition to the next step based upon the next tag, which would, in that case, would be the start PB, right? So the start underscore PB, which is the start button right here. So currently in the step we're in right now, everything is off and the only thing that's on is the start PB or the stop PB underscore light. So that's what we're transitioning to a one. Now keep in mind when you're doing sequential function charts, if you write a tag into a value of one, make sure you write it into a safe state um, whatever whatever safe state it is uh, deemed in your system to you know in a controlled manner in my my case if I write the start or uh, uh, tag of one right here if I start it I'm writing that that tag a value of zero right here if I want to stop the whole system I can hit the e-stop and it will e-stop the system as well uh, again that's based upon this uh, branch transition right here so you can see the branch transition I can either allow the system to, if it goes through the PE1 becomes active, then it will go through that path. And if I hit the stop push button or the stop or the E stop, then it will go right back up to the very top up here. And so we've seen that, we've actually seen me start and stop it, right? So we've seen me start, stop the system. Let's watch the system run right, right quick. So right now we're in step underscore zero zero one which in this case is either waiting for fo the photo I want by a certain box height so this box right here coming through is going to be high enough for that photo I to detect it so it should allow the pusher to work at that point and you'll see this so as the pusher pushes it you see that it does come back and it, it, it loops back to right here and lets the system decide again whether the box is going to be a small box or a big box. Does it need to push it or does it need to not push it? Very simple logic, right? Um, but again, very controlled in that manner, right? So in this step 001, we're controlling the start light on, which the start light is on, the conveyor's on, which you can see the conveyor's running boxes. The pusher's on a zero because we're not using the pusher until we actually transition into step uh, 002 right here that's when we're going to be using the pusher okay it's just like it's using right now um, so when it comes down to it and we're transitioning out of that step based upon a time so uh, basically we're saying a certain time limit so it's a very simple scenario a uh, very easy to understand scenario uh, but I did want to actually show you that it's it's a very functional and easy easy concept to grasp when you're using a, 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 a box sorting system on a conveyor system right so could this be done on, on ladder logic? Most likely this will be done on ladder logic, but could you do it on sequential function chart? Yes, you can. A very interesting way too, because it's very short, compact, um, and very light, right? Very easy to read. Again, a step and a transition, right? So that's really the, 
you think about a, a transition as like a gatekeeper, right? So when you're at a certain point, each one of these, like right now, we're waiting on either the box to be a certain height or a push button to, to actually be active, right? So if I hit the push stop push button right now, you can see that it's going to be stopped. And that's just because in that transition, that tag, that stop push button was a one. So it allowed it to travel through and go back to step zero, zero, uh, zero, which again, shut the whole system off because we're not, we're not running it, right? So again, if I were to hit the start push button, you could see that working again, and then would go in and get to the decision maker again, which would be right here. So it's a very simple and easy, understandable uh, sequential function chart to use. And I just wanted to show you that. So it's, it's got safety mechanisms built in so I can stop the whole system again. And that's the whole recovery system, right? So that's the, uh, the ability to safely control a system is very important. When you come down to being able to, um, when you're programming something, no matter what PLC language you're using, it's the scope of work. So making the machine do its task, right? And then it's reliability, making sure it can do that task and recover from any up process upset reliably, and then making sure it's easy to read, which you can see the sequential function charts, very, it's pretty easy to read. Uh, even if you're a beginner, right? It's pretty simple to understand that the bits are at zero or the bits are at one. And currently that you're in this state because it's, that's what's green, right? So you're in this step right here. Now, if I hit the start push button, you can easily tell you're in this step. So it's an easy thing to read it and, and interpret as well. So with all that said, I just want to make a short video and show you how to do a box sorting system and show you, you know, how everything is done. Now I am hiding the wires just to keep everything uh, nice and compact, easy to read. So you can see the B1 would go back up here. Uh, B2 would go back up here. B4 would go back down to here. You can see, so you can you can actually push those buttons and actually take you to that transition. So with all that said, I just wanted to give you a uh, easy, understandable way to control something using a sequential function chart and not be so simple as they can just a conveyor with a box going back and forth. So hopefully with all that said, uh, you guys got a lot out of this video. And uh, again, uh, we're trying to make as many videos as we can to give you a diverse platform, you know, using uh, the 3D models and stuff of that nature. Because again, you get more out of it when you can see the functions work and see the logic working right beside it. So hopefully you got a lot out of this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.